Why buy halftone brushes when you can easily make them yourself? Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Haley and this is Haley K Studio. I love making videos for beginners in Procreate, but I also just like sharing it for anybody that wants to try a new style or something that they haven't tried in Procreate yet. So a few videos ago, I showed you how to use Procreate's built-in halftone effect. And today I'm taking a step further and showing you how you can create your very own halftone brushes from scratch. So you don't have to buy a halftone brushes. Not only will this save you some cash, but it'll also give you the satisfaction of knowing that you crafted something unique and fits your personal style. And it gets you more comfortable with making your own brushes and finding your way and procreate in a way that feels uniquely you. So stick around and by the end of this video, you'll have all the tools and knowledge you need to make your own custom halftone brushes. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more videos like this, hit that subscribe and I'm going to keep making them. So let's go ahead and get started and make these halftone brushes. So I'm starting off with a my typical canvas size. It's 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels and it is set to 300 dpi. We need it to be a square canvas in order to create the image that we are going to use as our brush grain. So we are going to be making a custom brush and the focus is going to be on the grain coating of that brush. And so we're going to do this by uh, repeating another skill that I showed in a, in a couple videos ago and that's making a seamless repeat and this is a simple seamless repeat because all we're doing is we're making a dot and we're taking a dot and we're taking it all over this screen in, in a seamless pattern so to start off with the first halftone brush that I'm gonna show you uh, I'm gonna just create a small circle here and this can be fairly small and I am going to fill that. I want to make the put this dead center onto my canvas. The next step is to make four copies of this dot and put them into the four corners of the canvas. And we'll take that first one, we'll select transform and then snapping and turn on magnetics and turn distance and velocity all the way up. And then we're gonna move this circle to those corners and you need to ensure that it is exactly into the corner uh, where you have those intersecting orange lines there. We'll repeat that into the four corners of the canvas with the remaining dots. Okay, so now we have our dots and I'm going to show you uh, a corresponding halftone brush that will pair with this one. So I want to keep this dot uh, and I'm just going to make a copy of it and save it for later. And with the remaining dot and four corners of that dot, I am going to flatten that and make four copies of that. So now I have four of those and so we will just create a seamless pattern using this image. And so I will just push these into the four corners of the canvas here and making sure that once we put it in, it's in the exact corner by seeing that we've maintained those intersecting orange lines. Okay, so we have done this once and I'm going to repeat this a few more times until I have reached the amount of dots I feel is appropriate to make this halftone brush. So I repeated that enough so that there are eight going up and eight, eight of these dots going up and eight of these dots going across. So now I'm going to take those layers and I'm going to flatten it. And now we can create our first halftone brush with this texture here. So uh, what I like to do is I don't, uh, anytime I make a brush, I always make it in black, but in order to use an image as a grain or a shape in a Procreate brush, it needs to be white. So I just make a copy of that and I uh, create a new layer and I take white and I drop that on top of it then I create a clipping mask and then I merge that down. And so now you can see all we have are white dots. When I have my white background color on, you can't really see it, but here you can see that those are all my white dots. So I'm going to copy that and put that on my clipboard. I have a new brush set here that I created for this. And now I'm just going to hit this plus sign. And now we're going to code this brush in order to use it as a halftone brush. Stroke path, 
that can remain the same. Stabilization, all those set to none. On taper, all of these defaults are just fine. Shape, we're gonna keep that shape. All of these de defaults are fine. And then grain is where we're gonna start making some changes. So first we want to hit edit and then import to paste in our image and then click done. And then we're gonna change the grain behavior to textured. And scale is really to your preference. I like this to at about an eight. Um, and you can always change this to fit your image that you're making, but eight seems to work pretty well for me at this point. And depth it is okay if it's at max and um, the rest of these can just be left as default. And all of these next tabs can just be left as default and we're gonna go all the way down to Apple Pencil. Then pressure, we're, the size is gonna be set to max. And then opacity, I'm gonna turn that all the way down. And then bleed, I'm gonna set that to 33%. And then this tilt, I'm gonna do at zero degrees. And then cursor outline, I'm gonna set that to contrast. And then the rest of those can just be remain as default on brush properties. The preview size and the smudge pull, those can remain the same. Um, preview size is really uh, your personal preference. But max size, I'm gonna turn this all the way up. Minimum size, max opacity, and minimum opacity, those can stay as they are. And then we can go to about this brush and we can give it a name. You can just call it a half tone, give it whatever name you want, that's fine. If you're wanting to um, use this personally, you don't have to put in your name, but if you're ever wanting to sell these, you'll want to um, put your name in there so that someone doesn't try to duplicate it and sell it as their own. Just a little tip from me to you. Okay, so now we have our half tone brush and it's done. And let's go ahead and test it out. So I'm gonna uh, select black as my color again. I'm gonna create a new layer and I'll turn this down a little bit. And now we have a half tone brush and you can use this in any color uh, and it'll work just fine. Uh, and so the dots are pretty little because we've scaled it down so much, but if you want bigger dots, you can um, increase this the scale on the grain tab. So this right here will make the dots bigger or smaller. So I personally, like I said, I like it set to eight um, to start to start off. And so that's where I've set it right now. But go ahead and increase those if you want. Now we have our first half tone brush done. And what's great with half tone is layering your half tones. What you can do is you can create another half tone brush to use alongside this one if you're wanting to create something that is never going to intersect as much as it does um, when you're just reusing that same half tone brush. And so this is why we saved our original dot. So I'm just going to duplicate it. I don't want to get rid of my original dot. I always kind of hoard those things because what if I need it again? I don't want to, I don't want to lose it if I need it again. So here's our original dot. And, and in order to not get it to overlap, I, I want this dot to not be perfectly in the middle. So I'm going to turn off the magnetics and all of these things real quick so I can kind of get it off center and kind of in an awkward spot. So I'm going to duplicate this and create this into a street repeat. So I'll turn back on magnetics and snapping and distance and velocity. And then I will move this over here and then move this one over here and make sure that it is lined up perfectly. And now I will flatten that layer. And so now to ensure that this maintains a square as I am moving it all around, I'm just going to fill this with a random color. And then I am going to duplicate the dots so that I have four and then this square so that I have four and then move them around so they're paired together. And now I will create my straight repeat. Okay, so I'm just going to group these and delete them and then a group, I'm just going to flatten those. I'm going to repeat this a few more times so that the dots get a lot smaller. Okay, so now I've completed making my dots and I will turn these white by duplicating it, adding a layer above and dropping in a white on top of that and create that clipping mask and merge it down. 
and now it is fully white. And now all I have to do is go to this halftone brush, duplicate it. I can just maintain all of the same coding and then just edit the image and import my new image. And now we have another halftone brush that we can use to layer colors. So we can change the name to this one to halftone two, just so we know this is our layering halftone brush. And let's go ahead and test it out. So let's take this nice blue with our halftone number one, and then take a green with their halftone number two and see how, well, we can, maybe you can't see that on the screen as well. So let's choose a different blue. So here are the half tones. They aren't overlapping quite as much. So if you're wanting to really layer your half tone dots uh, in a way that is going to give you more half tone texture, then this is a great way to do it. Okay, so now I've shown you how to make two different dotted halftone brushes. So now what I want to show you is how to create a horizontal line halftone. So sometimes you see a dotted halftone and then sometimes you see like the diagonal lines that are used as shading brushes in vintage art or vintage cartoons or vintage comics. And so now we're going to create that effect as well. So in order to do that, we need to make a seamless pattern of diagonal stripe and we can use the same canvas. I'm going to create a new layer and I am going to drop in just a gray. I just need to use it as a guide while I make some adjustments to my canvas. We can use the same canvas, but what we need to do is go to actions and canvas and then crop and resize. So we need to turn on snapping and then change this. We need to temporarily make this larger to 3000 by 3000 and then recenter this. So, so we turn on the snapping so we can see the intersecting orange lines here because this square that was our original canvas needs to be directly in the middle. And I'm gonna create a new layer and now I need my selector tool and I want rectangle and color fill and I'm just gonna choose black again. And I need to make a rectangle right in the center. Transform cursor, I'm gonna make sure this is directly in the middle. And if it doesn't reach the exact edges, it's okay because it's gonna be cropped down. Uh, but now I need to rotate it 45 degrees and then duplicate this two more times and then put this in the corner. So what we want now are these blue intersecting lines because it isn't quite, it's not to the out, outer edge of our canvas. It's still within our canvas, but we need to make sure that this is squared off and um, it will create a seamless repeat. So these intersecting blue lines are what we are looking for. And then I will take the other one that I duplicated. I will duplicate that down here and I've got my intersecting blue lines. So now I'm just going to flatten that down and I am going to go back to actions and then canvas and then crop and resize. Go back to settings and set it back to 2048 by 2048. Turn on the snapping and put this again directly in the middle and then hit done. And now we have the basis for a seamless diagonal line repeat and I don't really need uh, this gray box anymore but I will repeat the process of creating a seamless repeat by duplicating this uh, three times. So I have four total images of it and then move it into the four corners of my canvas and do that enough times until I have the amount of lines that I'm happy with. And again, I'm going to duplicate it one more time and <laughs> save it in case I need it. It saved me many times before. Okay, so now we have our seamless diagonal line repeat. So I will make this white as you do to create a, a brush. So I have duplicated that, add another layer, drop in my white, create, a, there's another way to do this too. You can do this any way you want. You could alpha lock and then color fill, but um, the, I do this out of habit. So I'm just gonna merge that down and then I'm gonna hit copy. And again, all we have to do is duplicate this half tone brush again. And I'm just gonna move this down it added that one at the end and I just it's I only want to have to edit one of them so um, the shape can remain the same so we're going to go to grain and click on edit import and paste 
Now we can hit done and we've got our um, half tone diagonal here and you can see that is a diagonal line completely seamless. There are no parts where I something didn't seamlessly um, go together. So, so uh, I want to create another one with the diagonal lines going the opposite way. So I'm just going to duplicate that. You don't have to do it this way. You can just duplicate the um, you can just duplicate the brush and rotate it inside the brush. But I'm going to do it this way because I feel like sometimes when you rotate the image here, it doesn't always follow you. Um, that's just something I've personally experienced, but maybe there's a better way to do it. So I am going to duplicate this and then go to grain and then hit edit and import and paste and hit done. And then about brush, we'll say this is half tone diagonal two. Uh, we have two diagonal line half tone brushes. So let's go ahead and test these out. Here's number one. And then here's number two. And it creates kind of like a cross hatch shadowing effect which I think is very cool. It's, it's something common that you see in vintage comics and I love it. So there you have how to create your own halftone brushes. So it's very important that you create seamless repeats with those dots and with those lines. There's only four here, but you, you know, now that you know how to do it, you can experiment with it and make your own and make it your own. So, so now we can see these work in action. So I have this image here that I made of this little lumberjack woodchuck guy. This is a very common image uh, here in the Pacific Northwest that where I live and we have a lot of forestry in my area. I live in Oregon and um, this is a common mascot that we have in this area. So I thought it would be kind of cute to create one of my own. And I have this flat image that I wanted to try out using these halftone brushes. So I'm just going to um, go through on each layer and show you what you can do with these brushes that you make. Now we have our little woodchuck forestry mascot. He is all vintaged up with his half tone and cross hatching that I just absolutely love. I um, it's totally nostalgic for me because I was a huge comic book nerd growing up. I owned so many Archie comics. Um, so, you know, that might count for some people, might not count for others, but it does for me. And it makes me totally nostalgic for these vintage style comics. I just love the half toning. It creates a really, it's a really simple way to do it. There's so many more specialty half tone brushes that you can get, but I feel like this is, this creates a really awesome effect and adds a lot of style to it very quickly and with not a whole lot of deep Procreate knowledge, um, but with just enough to create something that is fun and nostalgic. So thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this one, hit that subscribe and um, I will show you more. I do a lot of different styles here in Procreate. And if there's ever anything that you would like me to try and show you my take on here in Procreate, give me a comment below and give me your suggestions and I would love to try it out. Thank you again. And I will see you next time. Bye.